a quick new idea daily from the world's greatest TEDx talks. I'm your host, Atosa Leone, and this is TEDx Shorts. Do you ever find it difficult to be an optimist? Especially in these trying times, it can feel like no matter how hard you try to see something in a positive light, you just can't get unstuck from seeing the negative. Well, you're not alone. Psychologists have found that negative thinking leads to more negative thinking, and that patterns of negative thoughts are extremely difficult to stop. Alison Ledgerwood is the principal researcher at the Attitudes and Group Identity Lab at the University of California, Davis. And her research indicates that it's indeed more difficult to turn pessimistic thoughts into optimistic ones. But it's not all bad news. In her talk today, Allison shares things you can do to break free from the negative. We all know intuitively that there are different ways of thinking about things. The same glass, the saying goes, can be seen as half full or half empty. And there's a lot of research in the social sciences showing that depending on how you describe the glass to people, as half full or half empty, it changes how they feel about it. So if you describe the glass as half full, this is called a gain frame because you're focusing on what's gained, then people like it. But if you describe the same glass as half empty, a loss frame, then people don't like it. But we wondered what happens when you try to switch from thinking about it one way to thinking about it another way? Can people shift back and forth or do they get stuck in one way of thinking about it? Does one of these labels, in other words, tend to stick more in the mind? Well, to investigate this question, we conducted a simple experiment. We told participants in our experiment about a new surgical procedure, and we randomly assigned them to one of two conditions. For participants in the first condition, the first group, we described the surgical procedure in terms of gains. We said it had a 70% success rate. And for participants in the second group, we described the procedure in terms of losses. We said it had a 30% failure rate. So it's the exact same procedure. We're just focusing people's attention on the part of the glass that's full or the part of the glass that's empty. Perhaps unsurprisingly, people like the procedure when it's described as having a 70% success rate, and they don't like it when it's described as having a 30% failure rate. But then we added a twist. We told participants in the first group you know, you could think of this as a 30% failure rate. And now they don't like it anymore. They've changed their minds. And we told participants in the second group, you know, you could think of this as a 70% success rate, but unlike the first group, they stuck with their initial opinion. They seemed to be stuck in the initial loss frame that they saw at the beginning of the study. Once we think about something as a loss, that way of thinking about it tends to stick in our heads and to resist our attempts to change it. What I take away from this research and from related research is that our view of the world has a fundamental tendency to tilt toward the negative. It's pretty easy to go from good to bad, but far harder to shift from bad to good. We literally have to work harder to see the upside of things. On a more personal level, what this research means to me is that you have to work to see the upside. There is research out of UC Davis showing that just writing for a few minutes each day about things that you're grateful for can dramatically boost your happiness and well-being and even your health. We can also rehearse good news and share it with others. We tend to think, right, that misery loves company, that venting will help get rid of our negative emotions, that we'll feel better if we just talk about how terrible our day was. And so we talk, and we talk. And we talk about the boss who's driving us crazy and the friend who never called us back and the meeting at work where every little thing that could go wrong did. But we forget to talk about the good stuff, and yet that's exactly where our minds need the most practice. I think we can also work in our communities to focus on the upside. We can be more aware that bad tends to stick. One mean comment can stick with somebody all day, all week even. And bad tends to propagate itself, right? Somebody snaps at you, and you snap back, and you snap at the next guy, too. But what if the next time somebody snapped at you, you forgave them? What if the next time you had a really grumpy waitress, you left her an extra large tip? Our minds may be built to look for negative information and to hold on to it. 
but we can also retrain our minds if we put some effort into it and start to see that the glass may be a little more full than we initially thought. Alison Ledgerwood is a behavioral scientist who holds a PhD in social psychology from New York University. The TEDx talk you just listened to was recorded at a TEDx event at University of California, Davis. All TEDx events are independently organized by volunteers who believe in TED's mission of ideas worth spreading. Special thanks to the organizing team at TEDx UC Davis. Want to listen to the full talk? Find Allison's talk and more at TED.com slash TEDx Shorts. I'm Atosa Leone. Thanks for listening and see you tomorrow.